Hi winners, this is Dr. Srikant from Team MDS Conquer. Now I'm here with the topic clotting mechanism. Okay, first of all, the most important thing is you need to write down the definition of clotting or coagulation. Okay, so clotting or coagulation can be defined as a process in which the blood loses its fluidity and become a jelly like mass within few minutes after it is shut out or collected in a container so you need to go ahead with the definition so once you're done with the definition you need to write about the clotting factors and i hope you remember the uh, common code of the mnemonic that we used to follow in the 11th standard that is foolish people try climbing long slopes after Christmas, comma, some people have fallen. Okay, so that is a quote in which I hope you remember that sixth factor is missing. Okay, so code is foolish, which is F. Next one is people, that is the P. Try for T, climbing for C long for L slopes for S after anti Christmas again some people P have H fallen F so this is the code if you remember this code and you can list out this beautiful table which is very very important so once you're done with this you need to write about the stages of clotting which includes three stages that is the formation of thrombo prothrombin activator and conversion of prothrombin to thrombin and conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin which is clearly given this is the step one okay that is prothrombin activator the step two conversion of prothrombin to thrombin step three formation of fibrin from fibrinogen okay so you need to give a brief idea about this that is the first step which is the prothrombin activator is divided into two things okay one is intrinsic factor and extrinsic factor and all these series of reactions are very very important i'm going to give a very simple logical code which you can return for a longer duration of time about the intrinsic and extrinsic factors okay so all these tables has to be the flowcharts has to be clearly given so that the paper setter the pa paper evaluator will get a clear cut idea that you are very strong in this particular subject okay next important thing how to remember the factors it's very simple you can write it as the intrinsic and the extrinsic okay so the intrinsic and the extrinsic right so you can keep an x in the center x means 10 so the leftover factors from the 10 is it starts from 12 12 is going to activate 11 10 is already there so 11 is going to activate 9 okay 9 is going to activate 8 and 8 is going to activate 10 clear so which factor is left over here 7 is left over so 7 is going to be the part in the extrinsic pathway okay so we are done with we are done with 10 which is the main one activated both in the extrinsic as well as the intrinsic pathways so we are done with 11 we are done with 12 we are done with 9 we are done with 8 and we are done with 7 and you know that 6 is absent so the leftover are 5 okay 4 4 is calcium and 2 1 okay so 4 2 1 are the leftovers right so by which this is a common pathway and this is the extrinsic this is the extrinsic pathway and this is sorry this is the intrinsic pathway and this is the extrinsic pathway by which you can easily write down the sequence of activations of each clotting factor and the enzymes or the substrate that are involved in this 
so this is all about the basic plotting methods and some application aspects like which when whenever there is a drop in this particular clotting factor you can do this or extrinsic pathways related to which times like if you take about the blood picture you'll have bleeding time clotting time prothrombin time activated prothrombin time so there are many such times which is going to activate at which level if you mention a table as an application part that is more than sufficient hemophilia a is due to deficiency of b is due to deficiency of one billion one factor all these extra applications things that you have to add on the paper basing upon the time that is available for it so once you're done with this okay so second important question which is related to this or which you can write as an application part is anticoagulants okay so anticoagulant mechanism of the blood can be divided into two factors that is the physical factors and chemical factors the notes for this physical and chemical i'm going to provide you on the group in the form of a pdf so the next one is uh, you need to write briefly about the anticoagulants so anticoagulants can be used to prevent the blood clotting inside the body in vivo and which prevents the blood clotting that is collected from the body in vitro or can be from both in vivo as well as in vitro these are the three things and this is taken directly from Grady Tripart and you need to mention this classification that is what is parental what are given oral because again oral anticoagulants can be another question I have seen this question most commonly in uh, endo uh, in the papers related to endo basics uh, surgery basics and perio basics okay mostly these three people they handle more blood and it's most commonly asked question for the oral surgery department okay so you need to write about this classification in detail in detail that is indirect uh, thrombin inhibitors direct thrombin inhibitors okay so this is this is very very important okay direct factor xa inhibitor oral direct thrombin inhibitors all these are important okay so in this few things few 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 aspects we need to go in depth okay basing upon the length of the question i feel this question cannot be given for a 20 marks maybe along with the clotting mechanism and anticoagulants can be given for 20 marks as an application based question specifically for oral surgery department people but for most of other departments it will be an individual question which cannot be for 20 marks so as as it's not for 20 marks you cannot describe each and everything so uh, you you can uh, elaborate few things like uh, your heparins are most commonly used right so you can write some some important aspects of about heparin or some important aspects about warfarin because they are most commonly asked uh, or you can talk about the citrates and all this okay so that is important so before coding the article what are the subheadings for example if you're talking about heparin or if you're talking about any other any other particular citrates or you can talk about EDTA. EDTA is again used as anticoagulant, right? So, or you can talk about uh, uh, common derivatives. So, any of this, make sure you try to uh, keep at least like two headings: some basic introduction, some basic introduction, introduction of the particular agent, followed by the mechanism of action, or you can write about pharmacokinetics, brief pharmacokinetics or pharmacodynamics followed by the uses, uses of the particular drug, uses or uses of the particular drug and the dose. All these headings are going to give more good impression, basically good impression and more score chances from the person who is correcting your paper. So once you're done with all the source, those things, because as this question is most commonly asked for the surgery and endo people, I have quoted two references, like before going to conclusion you need to code such application based questions you need to code at least two subject related references or a small studies over them like how is anticoagulants useful how, how are the anticoagulants effective are there any recent articles something like if you are a perio person try to collect two perio related and oral anticoagulant stuff or if you don't find perio related go for general dentist no problem you can go for general dentist like ma dental management of a patient receiving anticoagulants this is this is something related to general dentistry right or it, you can code for oral surgery also right oral surgery you can code this for perio also so basing upon the question you can code a relevant departmental related 
coding that is mandatory so this is this is taken from journal uh, journal of oral sciences you have to code everything and you please write down and write some conclusion related to this okay and similarly is uh, is the is stopping of anticoagulant therapy really required in minor dental surgery okay how about in endodontic micro surgery okay so the i mean this particular article will have some basic conclusion so write those things in the conclusion uh, and try to code these articles which definitely give a sound uh, concepts it definitely give a sound confidence for the uh, person who is correcting your paper so that he will definitely add extra scores for you so once you're done with this i always said before going for conclusion as a heading okay you can keep the the codings i mean the previously i have discussed this you can keep this as evidence based dentistry heading i was talking about evidence based so you can keep evidence based dentistry heading followed by you can code two articles related to your particular department and followed by the general references like general references one i, I have coded for kd3 party that is particularly oral anticoagulants related classification and the second one uh, are all are the physiology ones guide and ganon and your symbol income okay so you can code this apart from these four you can code two articles i told like two department based references okay two department based references so totally six are more than sufficient if it is a 20 marks question if it is a uh, if it is a like 10 marks or seven marks i feel like three are more than like you can go for uh, any of these two followed by one departmental based reference or basing upon the time available because finishing is always important right in the dentistry finishing is always important and i feel like finishing will be mostly by the conclusion or the evidence based reference heading to and your references so this finishing is going to give the extra scores so i'm done with this particular topic okay thank you all signing off dr Srikanth from team mds conquer